there is a tremendous amount of genomic information available to us, from deep catalogs of genetic variants to expression and regulatory data that has been collected across hundreds of tissues and thousands of samples. In principle, this data can be used to find new connections between genomic elements and put new experimental results into a broader context. But in practice, this is difficult because data is spread across many different repositories, each of them having their own interfaces and their own organization. So you really need to know exactly what you're looking for and exactly where to find it. This is reminiscent of the early days of the internet before search fundamentally transformed the way we interact with the web. So here I'm going to present Giggle, a genomic interval search engine that just like web search did for the internet, will make genomic information more available, more accessible, and better utilized. To make things more complicated, genomics is a total soup of file formats, but they all basically encode genome sequences as single dimensional genomic intervals with respect to some reference genome. This encoding makes comparing sets of sequences or now sets of intervals much easier because you're no longer doing string comparison but doing interval intersections. The idea of indexing and searching in genomics is not new. For example, Tabix allows you to create indexes of individual annotation files, in this case bed files, so that you can very quickly perform these searches. For Tabix, the search is submitted to the index. Tabix then decompresses just a small portion of the bed file scans the intervals in that portion and returns any overlapping intervals. While Tabix is very fast, it was designed with individual files in mind. So using Tabix to search thousands of files requires creating thousands of indexes and resubmitting that query for each index. Giggle was inspired by a paper from the 90s called the Time Index, which used a B plus tree to index temporal intervals. I think you can see the similarities between a single dimensional chromosomal interval and a time interval. This paper introduced the idea of using a B plus tree because it had very efficient on disk retrieval. In this case, our databases are much larger than would fit in RAM, so it's important to be able to read from disk quickly and offered efficient in order traversal. Here is a simplified Giggle index of three annotation files, a promoter's file, binding sites, and transcripts. Without getting too deep into the details of the index, every interval indexed in a Giggle index corresponds to two values in the tree, one that corresponds to the start position and one that corresponds to just after the end position. For example, P1 starts at 1 and ends at 9. Therefore, there's an entry in the B plus tree for one, you can see there on the left-hand side, has a plus P1 underneath it, meaning that P1 starts at one. And then just after the end would be position 10. So on the rightmost node there, you see a 10, and you see underneath it minus P1. That means that P1 has ended by the time we get to 10. We'll do an example search, in this case, a, a small variant that spans positions one to five. And we're looking to find these intervals that overlap this variant. The search process is fairly straightforward. We're going to search for the start value, then we're going to search for the end value, and then we're going to scan from start to end, picking up any intervals that we see. Searches always start at the root, so we ask the question, is one less than these values? It is, so we traverse left, leads us to this leaf node, we then search for one, we find it, I'm going to go ahead and mark it as green. We're going to do the same thing and search for five. That starts at the root node, proceeds down to the middle leaf. We're going to go ahead and mark five there as red. And now, as I said, we're just going to scan from one to five, picking up all of the new intervals. So that's P1, P2, B1, T1. And then we use the very nice feature in B plus trees where leaf nodes are linked, traverse directly to the next leaf without moving up into parent nodes. So that allows us to go to five and pick up P3. This is our full intersecting set. We've now just searched our B plus tree. 
All right, so how fast is this new method? So we're going to time how long it takes to count the number of intersections where your queries have between 10 and 1,100,000 base pair intervals. And the database is from Roadmap Epigenomics, which gave us 127 different reference epigenomes. And Chrome HMM was used to identify 15 genomic states, things like quiescent or actively transcribed states for each reference epigenome. That gives us 1,905 tracks. We're going to look at four different technologies. The UCSC binning scheme implemented with SQLite 3, Tabix, bed tools, and of course Giggle. All of these done with a fairly modern Intel chip. Here are the results. You have the number of query intervals across the x-axis and total runtime in seconds across the y-axis. And as you can see, for the largest comparison, where you have 1 million query intervals, Giggle is between 7 and 2,000 times faster than other methods. But I think the most important point on this graph is here. 10,000 queries resolved in less than one second. This is about the speed you need to support large-scale search against all genomic data. Where I upload my file, I pick a project, and I hit search, and I get my results. But speed is only one part of the problem. The reason that Google beat Yahoo is because Google searches gave you more relevant results. So we need some way of ordering these results by significance. The way this is currently done is using Monte Carlo simulations, where we first count the number of observed intersections between a query and a database, and then we simply start shuffling. For each shuffle, we recount the number of intersections and use these counts to build an empirical distribution that describes the relationships between a query and a database. From this distribution, we can understand the enrichment or significance of our observed number of intersections. However, it is completely intractable to perform this simulation for each query for each database interval. But with the help of Brent Pedersen, we figured out that we can use contingency tables to estimate the significance and enrichment of the relationships between queries and databases, and we can do it instantly. Furthermore, these estimates very closely track the actual Monte Carlo values. So on top here, you have a graph that compares across the x-axis the Fisher exact estimate of the p-value from the contingency table with the Monte Carlo p-value. And on the bottom, you have a comparison of the odds ratio from the table versus the Monte Carlo enrichment values. In most cases, we're quite happy to use just p-values. However, that can lead to some problems. For example, you can have a false positive where your fold change between your observed and expected was small and presumably biologically insignificant, but it is statistically significant if the variance of the distribution is small. Similarly, you can have false negatives where there is a very large fold change that might be biologically interesting, but the variance of the distribution is large, leading to an insignificant p-value. You can see this in the following plot where we look at the log 2 odds ratio versus the negative log 10 p-value, and you can see that there are some large fold changes that have some very insignificant p-values. So what we really want is some way of combining significance and enrichment. And this idea was explored nicely in this 2014 paper, but in essence, you just take the product of the log 2 odds ratio with the negative log 10 p-value, giving us what we call a giggle score. All right, so let's look at an example. Our query in this case is going to be chip seek peaks from a MyoD experiment. So MyoD is an important transcription factor in muscle differentiation. And if we take those chip seek peaks as query intervals to a database of roadmap epigenomics, where we have 127 different tissues and 15 genomic states. And here is the result. Across the short axis, you have the different states. And on the long axis, you have the different tissues put into groups. The darker red corresponds to a more significant relationship between these MyoD chip seek peaks 
in a particular tissue at a particular state. So what I'd like to point out is that the majority of the significance lies not just in the muscle tissues, but in the transcription start sites and enhancers of those muscles. Where the most significant hit corresponds to myoblast enhancers, which exactly corresponds to what we'd expect given what we know about myoD's biology. And we can use any number of different queries here. So a completely different example are the 84 genome-wide significant SNPs identified for rheumatoid arthritis. We take those as a query set against roadmap epigenomics again. What this shows is a very clear signal of an autoimmune disorder, with most of the significance being in T cells, B cells, and the thymus. Now this is a positive control because we know that rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder, but we didn't always know that. So you could imagine that a new disease is found, we find genome-wide significant variants associated with that disease, and we can use a Giggle-style search to see if it has a pattern similar to other autoimmune disorders or has some sort of pattern that is specific to a particular tissue. But this is just one resource. As we talked about before, there are many resources out there. And I think fast search is the key for integrating these resources and allowing us to ask questions that go across these references. One of the most widely used references available to us is the UCSC Genome Browser that has thousands of annotations. Here I'm showing just a small portion of the human genome where every color roughly corresponds to one annotation. And as we scroll down, we can just get a sense of how complex this data set is and how difficult it would be to identify a connection between some experimental result and the data available here. So what we want to do is use fast search to facilitate that exploration. And that's just what we're doing. With the help of Tanya from Gabor Marth's lab, we developed a web interface that starts with a search of your experimental results and roadmap epigenomics. So this is similar to the heat map we saw before. You upload your MyoD peaks, you hit run, and you get this heat map. Within this heat map, each individual square is a link that you can click on. If you click on skeletal, muscle, flanking, active TSS sites, you get a list of all of the intervals in roadmap that overlap a binding site. Each of these is also a link, and when you click on that, it does a dynamic search to a giggle index of the UCSC genome browser and produces what we call a smart view. Only tracks that have an intersection with your query are turned on and everything else is turned off. So you can imagine how useful this is. You don't need to scroll through hundreds or thousands of different tracks like we did before. This is exactly the tracks that have an interesting feature in your region. So that's Giggle. Everything's available on my GitHub site. We can handle thousands of annotations and hundreds of millions of intervals, provide fast queries and a high quality enrichment score. Moving forward, we're always interested in more visualizations to expand on the heat maps and smart views. We're also very interested in looking at stats that can help us understand the relationships of queries across datasets and between queries. You can imagine looking at variants identified in cases and as controls as your queries and look for changes in the enrichment score between these two queries. I'm also very excited about the idea of remote indexing and distributed searching. You can imagine some spider that will find new experimental results and fold those into a large unified Giggle index, which will really make things accessible. I'd like to thank Aaron Quinlan, Brent Pedersen, Jay Gertz, Tanya DeSierra, and Gabor Marth for all of their help.